I want to introduce a very powerful feature called markers in Adobe Premiere. Markers allow you to annotate your timeline and individual clips, which in turn helps you organize your footage even more and prepare chapter links for YouTube. Let's dive into how markers work and see how we can benefit you in your next project in different ways. So stay tuned to the end of this video. I actually created a free script that you can download and you can use for your own markers in order to translate them from Adobe Premiere's CSV format into the perfect format for YouTube. It's going to make it a lot easier when you want to annotate your footage. So let's say in this massive timeline, I make a reference to, I don't know, some product or whatever. And I want to quickly find that specific reference so that I can go into my B-roll and then actually locate it. Because you know I could have hours and hours of B-roll and to have to sift through all that footage is just way too much work. It's, it's very exhausting. So what I typically do is this. So I'm gonna cancel this out and I'm just gonna open all my projects. Just go ahead and open all your sequences, I mean, okay? So, so here, each one rec represents kind of a, a category, for example. So in this case, this is the LifeX one and this just kind of shows all the LifeX products and stuff like that. Now, in this case, I don't really need to annotate anything. I mean, there's not much to do, but using markers is a very key and it's gonna help you in the long run. I'm gonna explain how that works. So this is a really simple one. We don't really have to do much here, but let's say, okay, let's say this is the light bulb. I'm just gonna hit my shortcut. I read it. It's usually control M on Windows, but in my case, I want to keep, like I said, everything on the left side of the keyboard. I don't wanna have it on the right side. So M, the letter M is on the right side of the keyboard. So too far for me. So control Q and then control Q again. And what that's done is actually created a marker on the actual clip. There's a little bit difference about this when you apply the marker to the timeline. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. So I'm gonna give a little name. This is like, I'm gonna call this bulb. And then as we seek through the timeline, here is the, the LifeX strip. So I'm gonna hit command Q or sorry, control Q twice, mark it again. So you can see here, I have marker here and marker there. This is, this is a little bit of a weird example. I, I think a better example would be if there was like a ton of footage and it would be really hard to isolate, okay, where's the bulb and where's the, the strip. So let's say I'm here or whatever on this part of the timeline. And you know, I'm looking for the smart bulb. I'm not looking for the strip, for example. How do I actually search for that? Well, I'm gonna type bulb and then just make sure that markers is selected. And then find boom just found it right there i want to let's say i'm like oh, i don't know where i am in the in the timeline i'm going to hit Control f that's another keyboard shortcut type strip and then boom it takes me to where the strip is so this is a little bit of a weird example it's not the greatest let me let me find something that is a little bit more interesting i have a lot of different types of clips and maybe i want to show off this thing here this is called the mini cabinet or whatever for my desk you can see all the footage here i know it's under this main category i'm looking for the mini cabinet because it's related to this desk and then uh, I don't know where it is. Just type mini, boom, right there you have it. Now there's one little tricky thing about this is when you annotate your footage, if you don't select this actual clip here, you will end up marking the actual project, not the actual clip. So if I hit Q again, you can see the little green over here. And if I select this clip, you can see the little marker over here. So what is the better one? Well, there's this really big frustration I have with markers currently in Adobe Premiere, where if you mark, let's say on the timeline, so here, here and here and I don't know let's say this is monitor I'm talking about the monitor for example and then for whatever reason I have to move it my clips to the side these markers don't move with it you know they should be here here and here so that really really sucks if anyone knows that Adobe is going to fix this please let me know in the comment section now thankfully ripple delete and paste insert still maintain timeline marker consistency let me explain how that works. So as you can see, I have all these markers here and I'm going to be using that to kind of create my chapter links for my YouTube annotation. And let's say I'm going to insert something around here near the blue label over here. So let's say I copy this clip over here. And what I can do is called paste insert. And this is control shift V. So I just inserted that and it shifted all the markers to the right. So this is really good. Now, if I ripple delete, I'm going to use my X command. It also maintains consistency. So Yes, when you move it using this way, it doesn't keep the markers in line with the clips, unfortunately, but if you do paste insert or ripple delete, you'll still have that consistency. So typically near the end of my project, when I'm done editing everything, I will mark everything on the timeline to include chapter links. So project template, for example, and as I move over to this uh, marker, I've marked another chapter annotation. And I much prefer to do this 
then doing it in the YouTube editor profile. So here I have all my chapter links for this video I recently created, the Fitbit Charge 5. And it's kind of a pain to kind of like seek through all your footage and then create it. So I created a streamlined process to take the actual export of your CSV of all the markers you created. So all we have to do is go to File, Export, Markers, and make sure you select Comma Separated Values, and then you can just export it out. So what you'll end up with is a CSV file as you can see over here of all the markers that you've created on your timeline. So in the description of this video, I'll give you a link to this Google Doc that you can use. And I've created instructions on how to use this. All you need to do is make a copy. And on the first sheet over here, import Premiere Marker CSV. Uh, you can just delete all the sample data that I provided here. So just delete it. Take everything that you've created from your CSV export from Adobe Premiere and just paste it in the first column A1. And what that's going to do, if you click on the second spreadsheet, YouTube chapter links, it's actually going to create YouTube chapter links that you can just paste right into your YouTube video, for example just like that. So I hope I give you a more streamlined way to annotate your entire video project and then export it into a YouTube friendly format. So why would you want to do this process of using the markers in Adobe Premiere and then exporting them and then converting them into the YouTube format? Well, personally for myself, I find making chapter links in Adobe Premiere on the timeline to be a lot more easier, especially when you've labeled all your clips with different markers to indicate a different type of chapter. And of course, on the timeline, you can snap your playhead to the exact clip to the exact second, and this makes it a lot easier to annotate your footage. I find it a lot easier than having to go onto YouTube, then look at the, the actual seconds and minutes, and then write it down and then hit play. This is all segmented into your individual clips, so you know when the chapter or the context has switched, allowing you to indicate with a marker on Adobe Premiere's timeline. Another great use for markers is to add to-do notes, which is a very common practice in software development. So at the end of this video, I hope I convinced you that markers is a very powerful tool that you can use in Adobe Premiere to annotate your footage, create YouTube chapter links, and just make the whole process of video editing a lot more organized and more sane, especially when you have so much footage. Thanks for watching this video. If you do liked it, please do give a like. It really helps out the channel, and I will see you in the next video.